Peggy 18 if, if we were to have a mission in the game space, it's that we want to bring the player to make them a participant in the narrative. By bringing um, this character, Elizabeth, into the game, by having her with you pretty much for almost the entire game, we knew that if we didn't get her right, the game wouldn't be right. And she really is the emotional center of the game. This character, Elizabeth, she comes from a pretty dark place. And, but she's also got an incredible amount of enthusiasm for life. And when we found Courtney, I think we found somebody who could, who could do both. I don't dance, come on, let's go. Why, what could be better than this? It's so complex. I mean, you're talking about really trying to, to bring forth all the complexities of human nature that impact us because you're having to use only your voice to convey your entire, you know, the character and what you're trying to portray. You have to put your entire body into it. So there are times when I'm doing voiceover work and I'm literally drenched in sweat because my body is working so hard. Hey, knock it off! Stop it! Will you stop it? I'm not here to hurt you. Who are you? My name is DeWitt. I'm a friend. I come to get you out get of here. Get away! Are you real? It's not these one-note emotions, and, and I think that's what was so important to us as a collaborative team, to be really putting forth a narrative that was strong and that was complex and that was, you know, reflective of how deep and um, the myriad of emotions that the human beings experience. She really had a sense of telling a story and having a conversation with no words. If you're watching a silent film, you understand what's going on and you don't need words. We saw her and Sean's like, by the way, this is the girl. I'm like, oh yeah, that's the girl, absolutely. I had to really rely on my imagination and rely on what I was being told by, you know, the director. <laughs> for me to see myself, like literally, like every movement that I did, yeah. I mean, I can, I see myself in it. I mean, it might not be my face, but the thing is, is she's actually in a world. When I did it, yeah. I was in like an empty room. Yeah. They put me out into this giant sort of basketball court, it looked like, with stuff taped out on the floor that was sort of like the imaginary, you know, world. She had to do a lot of physical things that I probably wouldn't do in my everyday life, you know, kicking some butt and, uh, you know, with a bat and like beating the hell out of something. It just started to feel like it was my voice, you know, I just really started to connect with it physically and this voice was all one. I don't understand how good we get there. The incredible voice acting and the incredible uh, motion capture acting was the most useful and inspiring element that we could have had for Elizabeth. Liz will follow you around the world and if you decide that you don't want to go where she thought you were heading, she can handle that really, really cleverly. She will stop if you stop. She will keep running if you decide that you're not interested in what you're doing here. She will be by your side no matter what you end up doing. The moment you come up against a character who's just sort of standing there or behaves robotically or behaves in a way that is so alien to what you'd expect out of a human being, you just shut them off. And you just say, oh, they're just a video game character. I don't need to worry about feeling anything about them. And so we tried a lot of things. Uh, we tried to make Liz um, have emotions um, so that she can react to things in the world and things that you do. For example, we might say that Liz will feel comfortable leaning against this wall, but she'll do so with her arms crossed. And she'll do so with her back slightly turned towards you. And that difference of just a few degrees is enough to make the player feel that they're really in the doghouse. You're going to see her all over the place. You're going to see her on giant billboards in, you know, New York and L.A. and you're going to see her on TV ads. I said, okay, well, if we're going to find a person to play Elizabeth, 
I think we already have that person. Еще один из самых первых вариантов Элизабет, я сказала, боже мой, это же я, я должна ее сделать. В один прекрасный день мне пришло сообщение на Facebook от Кена Левина о том, что у них есть ко мне предложение, от которого я не смогу отказаться, просьба связаться по электронной почте. И, соответственно, вокруг меня все суетились, 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 чего-то хотели, потом сказали, так, все, начинаем работать, посадили меня на стул, сказали просто сиди, смотри прямо в одну точку. И опять начали вокруг меня бегать, снимая с меня скан лица. Я думаю, ну ладно, что, окей, хорошо. Я с этим справлюсь, а потом меня вдруг начали мучить, говорить, смейся, плачь, делай одухотворенное лицо, делай удивленное лицо. And all of a sudden we found this great character who existed in the space between the real world and the world of Bioshock Infinite. There was a moment where we had people coming up to us and saying, Liz is awesome. She did, I have a story to tell you about. And it was, everybody had their own unique stories because she was just doing systemic things. They could do the same thing twice. I actually get people telling me things that there's no way I could know about. Like, say there's one of the, the combats kicking off and they're having this incredible moment where they're running around the place and smashing someone in the face and blowing someone else up with a shotgun and they've suddenly a huge big boss man comes up and they just go, click! Oh no! <laughs> and then suddenly from the side, Liz goes, Booker, over here! You press the button, she throws it, you grab it and just go, boom! And they come up to me and go, and it was amazing! And I was like, yeah, me and Liz, we're gonna kick ass, we're gonna... <laughs> nothing we can't do. That's right. Even if we just break that barrier sometimes, where people feel she's, she's a, a friend or, a, or, or somebody going through this experience with them, then that would be very exciting for me. I really hope people fall in love with her. Um, I fell in love with her. I forget she's a real, not a real person sometimes, and I know Courtney really well, and I forget sometimes that there's that that's not that that's Courtney's voice, and that's Heather's motion, and that's the team's uh, other work, and I, she becomes a real person to me many times. And I think the reason we call her Liz internally is because she became a real person to us um, in a lot of ways. Elizabeth has been locked in her tower for however many years it was, and now instead she's going to be released from her secondary tower, which is our studio, and let loose in the world for real and that's just an incredible feeling let's go come on let's go come on let's go right now